Captain Bob was a retired sailor who owned the only bait shop in the seaside town of Sandy Cove. Known for his tall tales and colorful personality, Captain Bob had a knack for turning the mundane into the extraordinary. His shop was a hodgepodge of fishing gear, seashells, and an impressive collection of antique maps. But his most prized possession was a giant stuffed marlin, which he claimed to have caught single-handedly during a stormy night in the Bermuda Triangle.1 blustery morning, as Captain Bob was setting up shop, he noticed a new face in town. A tall, lanky man with a mysterious air about him was peering into the bait shop window. His clothes were a mix of styles from different decades, and he wore a monocle that gave him a slightly comical appearance. Ahoy there! Can I help ye? Captain Bob called out, his voice gruff, but friendly, the man turned and approached the door. Good day, sir. I am Professor Reginald P. Quagmire, a marine biologist of some renown. I am here to conduct research on the peculiarities of the local marine life. Captain Bob's eyes twinkled with curiosity. Well, Professor Quagmire, ye de come to the right place. I've got all sorts of bait to lure in the strangest of sea creatures. Come in, come in. As the professor entered, he was immediately taken aback by the clutter and chaos of the shop. Fishing rods leaned against shelves, jars of worms and minnows lined the counters, and a dusty old parrot squawked from its perch in the corner. What an eclectic collection you have here, Quagmire remarked, carefully stepping around a pile of nets. Been collectin' four years, Captain Bob said proudly. Now, what can I do for ye? The professor explained that he was particularly interested in the legend of the great albino lobster, a mythical creature said to inhabit the waters near Sandy Cove. According to local lore, this rare lobster had eluded capture for centuries and was rumored to bring good luck to anyone who caught a glimpse of it. Captain Bob's eyes gleamed with excitement. The great albino lobster, ye say? Aye, I've heard the tales. But no one's ever caught the critter, let alone seen it up close. Ye sure ye want to go chasin' after legends? Indeed, I do, Quagmire replied, adjusting his monocle. I believe that with the right bait and a bit of luck, we can find this elusive creature. And so, the two unlikely partners set out on a quest to catch the great albino lobster. Captain Bob rummaged through his shop, gathering all manner of bait and fishing gear. The professor, meanwhile, meticulously documented their preparations in a leather-bound journal, his handwriting neat and precise. Their first attempt involved a complicated contraption made of pulleys, nets, and an assortment of shiny lures. They loaded it onto Captain Bob's old fishing boat, the Salty Seagull, and set sail into the choppy waters of Sandy Cove. As they cast their elaborate trap into the sea, Captain Bob regaled the professor with stories of his seafaring days. The professor listened politely, though he was more focused on his research. Hours passed with no sign of the legendary lobster, and the two men returned to shore, empty handed but undeterred. Over the next few days, their attempts grew increasingly outlandish. They tried using exotic baits, from glowing jellyfish to rare sea cucumbers. They even enlisted the help of the local schoolchildren, who eagerly joined in the hunt, convinced that their homemade lobster lures would do the trick. Despite their best efforts, the great albino lobster remained elusive. Captain Bob and Professor Quagmire were beginning to lose hope when inspiration struck. They would host a townwide lobster festival to attract the creature with music, lights, and an abundance of tasty treats. The entire town of Sandy Cove got involved. Fishermen decorated their boats with colorful lanterns, bakers prepared lobster-shaped pastries, and musicians tuned their instruments for the grand event. Even the mayor donned a lobster costume, much to the delight of the townsfolk. The night of the festival arrived, and the harbor was ablaze with activity. The air was filled with the sounds of laughter and music as the townspeople celebrated. Captain Bob and Professor Quagmire stood at the end of the pier, watching the festivities with a mix of excitement and nervousness. As the clock struck midnight, a hush fell over the crowd. All eyes were on the water, waiting for a sign of the legendary lobster. For a moment, it seemed as though the festival might end in disappointment. But then, a soft glow appeared beneath the surface of the harbor. Gasps of astonishment rippled through the crowd as the great albino lobster slowly emerged from the depths. Its shell was a shimmering white, and it moved gracefully through the water, seemingly drawn to the music and lights. The professor's monocle nearly fell from his eye as he scribbled furiously in his journal. Captain Bob, unable to contain his excitement, let out a triumphant shout. We did it, Professor. We found the blasted thing. The lobster swam closer to the pier, its antennae twitching curiously. The townsfolk watched in awe as it circled the boats, its luminous shell, casting a magical glow over the harbor. It lingered for a few moments, then slowly descended back into the depths, leaving the crowd in stunned silence. The festival erupted into cheers and applause. Captain Bob and Professor Quagmire were hailed as heroes, their unlikely partnership cemented in the annals of Sandy Cove history. 
The professor's research was published to great acclaim, and Captain Bob's bait shop became a popular destination for curious tourists and eager fishermen. As for the great albino lobster, it remained a cherished legend, a symbol of the magic and mystery of the sea. Captain Bob and Professor Quagmire continued their adventures, always on the lookout for the next great discovery. And in the cozy, cluttered bait shop by the sea, the tales grew taller and the laughter louder, as the spirit of Sandy Cove lived on.